Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Hill, Texas history teacher for Team Michigan State. And today we are going to talk about the Civil War in Texas. Okay, in other words, we're going to talk about how the Civil War, um, the war between the North and the South, how it affected uh, Texas and the people who lived in Texas. So, First things first, um, if you are at home, you're going to be doing these notes on the Google Docs version. If you're in class, you will either be doing them on the uh, paper copy provided by your teacher or you will be doing those on a Google Doc as well. It's going to be up to your choice or your teacher's decision. Um, first things first, make sure you write your essential question at the top of the page. And today's essential question is... How did the U.S. Civil War affect life in Texas? How did the war between the North and the South affect the people who lived in Texas? Well, first thing, let's talk a little bit about the fact that, um, as we learned when we talked about the causes of the war, Texas seceded from the Union, or Texas uh, uh, withdrew from the United States. So in 1861, Texas joined the Confederacy. Now they had a convention, a big meeting of people uh, in Austin, and they discussed whether or not they wanted to withdraw from the United States. And at the secession convention, uh, Sam Houston spoke against it. He did not want Texas seceding. Uh, when they voted, to secede, to withdraw. Uh, Houston accepted that, but he argued against joining the Confederate States of America. He believed rather that Texas, if nothing else, should just become the Republic of Texas again and should be neutral during the war and not uh, pick one side or the other uh, because he felt that there was no way the South could win the war. So when Houston refused to declare loyalty to the Confederacy, he was removed from office. So if you remember, we looked at a map yesterday. Here's the, the map again, uh, a little more clear maybe. Uh, you can see the blue states are the Union states where slavery was against the law. Uh, the red states are the Confederate states of America where slavery was legal. And then the two, uh, the, the little group here in the middle, those were the states where slavery was legal, but they chose not to join the, uh, the Confederacy. So most of the Civil War was fought in the South. Now, Texas was part of the South, but because Texas was so far west, there wasn't a whole lot of fighting that took place in Texas. Most of the fighting took place um, in what we consider to be the Deep South, uh, Virginia, uh, the Carolinas, uh, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, in, in those areas. Uh, the further west you went, in the Confederate States, the less fighting there actually was during the war. So what did Texas, what role did Texas play in the war? Well, first, Texas supplied soldiers to both sides. Now, Texas was a, Texas was a slave state, so a majority of the soldiers who fought in the Civil War that were from Texas fought for the Confederacy, and approximately 70,000 fought mostly in the cavalry due to their experience with horses. Now, if you remember when we talked about um, uh, the Texas Revolution, we talked about the different types of, of uh, soldiers in battles and cavalry are soldiers who are trained to fight on horseback. Well, because Texas was such a large state and because it seemed like everybody in Texas had a horse, and if you got from one place to another in Texas, you had to have a horse. And because of their horsemanship, most of the soldiers that fought were in the cavalry. Now, like I said, Texas supplied soldiers to both sides. There were a lot of people in Texas who did not support secession and did not want to join the Confederacy. And 
approximately 2,000 Texas men uh, traveled east and, and joined the Union Army, which means they fought for the United States against their, their friends and neighbors and brothers in the Confederacy. So another role that Texans played in the Civil War was protecting the frontier. Um, prior to the Civil War, the United States Army had occupied forts along the frontier, and it was the United States Army that protected settlers from Native Americans. Well, when the Civil War started, the Confederate Army ran the Union soldiers out, or they took over the, the forts where the, the American soldiers had been, the U.S. soldiers. So when that happened, the Confederacy assumed responsibility of protection of the people from Indian threats. The Confederate Army also chased renegades and outlaws, and they also controlled Union activity in the frontier. Uh, meaning it was um, the Confederate Army on the frontier that patrolled to make sure that Texas wasn't going to get invaded from the West for some reason. Texas also found itself defending the coastline. Um, the One of the key terms that we had uh, was uh, blockade. And a blockade is when um, ships surround a port or uh, surround an area to keep ships from coming in and to keep other ships from going out. So Texans defended the coastline to prevent the Union blockade of supplies and trade. Now, what that Union blockade consisted of was a plan by the United States Army uh, called the Anaconda Plan. And it was represented... Uh, back during the war by a great snake in this in this illustration this famous illustration uh you have a a drawing a cartoon of this snake with a head that is uh, red white and blue uh, and it is surrounding the southern states and it was called the anaconda plan because the united states planned to blockade the confederacy keeping needed supplies from being shipped in and cotton from being shipped out. The goal was to strangle the Confederacy and keep them from receiving assistance from European countries that traded with them. So Texas also made economic contributions, meaning they provided money for the Confederacy. Uh, cotton exports provided money to the Confederacy for vital goods that were needed for the war, such as weapons, uniforms, medicines, you know, any type of uh, supply that is needed for an army. So, in other words, uh, in Texas, their cotton equaled money, and that equaled supplies for the war. Other economic contributions were uh, the fact that because Texas was so far west and because there was not a whole lot of fighting going on in Texas, um, they were able to take and build factories in Texas. And these factories, um, they weren't able to build a lot, obviously, because the war only lasted four years but they tried to build as much as they could uh, so that Texas could make supplies that were needed by the Confederate Army. Uh, but of course, you know, the, part of the reason that they, they wanted to do this was the Union had made this blockade to cut off supplies coming in from Europe. So they were going to need to get these supplies somewhere, and they decided that Texas would be a good place to build some factories and make some of the things that they needed. But unfortunately, by that time, it was a little too, too little, too late. Now, even though there wasn't a lot of fighting that went on in Texas, um, the lives of Texans were greatly affected by the war. Uh, and how the war affected the lives of the every, everyday person in, in Texas was, was like this. The men had gone off to fight. So the absence of men created responsibility for women and children, uh, whereas the husband 
uh, or the eldest man in the family was the one who ran the farm or the plantation. Now it was up to the women of the family to, to run the farm and to run the business. And they had to take a more active hand in working in the fields. Um, the same applied to the children. Now, one thing you need to remember, um, when we talked about the growth of slavery, only about one in four families in Texas owned slaves, about 25%. So, you know, if you think, well, yeah, the men were gone, but the slaves could work. No, they couldn't because 75% of the families in Texas didn't even own a slave. So when the husbands went off to war, um, that left everything on the wife and the, the children of the family. So farmers had been planting a lot of cotton to make money, but with the war coming up and the need to feed soldiers, farmers planted more corn and less cotton at the government's request, because the more corn you had, the more you were able to make the food necessary to feed the soldiers. And also in Texas, one of the aspects that's not talked about a lot was there was an increase in slaves in Texas because there wasn't a lot of fighting going on in Texas. And in the South where the fighting was going on, people were afraid that if the Union Army came in, the U.S. Army came in and, and took over the land, they would, you know, when they went through and they, they took over a farm or a plantation, that they would free the slaves. So what these owners of slaves in the South did was they packed up their slaves and they sent them to Texas uh, to, um, to members of their family or friends or whatever, and, and the hopes that when the war was over, they would be able to get the slaves back. So um, life of Texans were affected by um, the war. And one of the areas was transportation. Uh, they had just started really building railroads in Texas when the war started and um, materials for for transportation uh, the iron and steel that were needed to to build train tracks and to build the locomotives and all this other stuff all those materials were diverted to the military so there was a halt in building railroads and also especially in the south and and partially in texas roads and railroad tracks were destroyed by union soldiers to to kind of gum up the works to keep the um, the South from being able to transport things back and forth. Uh, and also bridges and roads suffered from lack of repair because there weren't men uh, in, on work crews to go out and, and repair things when they were damaged or when they were destroyed or when they just fell into a state of disrepair. Okay, there were some battles in the Civil War that were fought in Texas. Um, the Battle of Galveston, um, and the actual, the first battle of Galveston, uh, the battle of Galveston was January of 1863. Now in 1862, the union blockade started where the union ships started patrolling the Gulf of Mexico to keep ships from coming into Texas and to keep ships from going out of Texas. So this blockade started in 1862 and the Union actually took over the city of Galveston and took over the port there. And you understand when I say the Union, I'm talking about the United States Army, not the Confederate Army. So 1862, the Union takes over. Um, the blockade is going strong. Galveston falls under the hands of or falls into the hands of the, the United States Army. And in 1863, the Confederates were able to regain control of Galveston and it stayed under Confederate control for the rest of the war. So that really eased things up and it made it to where the uh, Texans could ship things in and out uh, and, and kind of help with the supplies to the Confederate Army. Uh, the second big battle of the Texas Rebel, uh, I'm sorry, of the Civil War that was fought in Texas was the, called the Battle of Sabine Pass in 1863. Uh, Sabine Pass was basically the mouth of the Sabine River. The Sabine River forms the border between uh, Texas and Louisiana. And the Battle of Sabine Pass basically happened right at the mouth and, and up 
into the river a little ways, uh, the Confederate forces repelled an invasion of U.S. forces at the mouth of the Sabine River. The United States Navy tried to send ships and soldiers up the Sabine River and, and have them disembark to get off um, and, and invade sort of southeast Texas there. And obviously, the like I said, the Confederate forces repelled that invasion. It was considered a big victory for, for the Confederate Army in Texas. Um, and then finally, the last battle that we're going to talk about was actually the last battle of the Civil War. It was called the Battle of Palmito Ranch, and it took place in May of 1865. Now, the interesting thing about the fact that it was fought in May of 1865 was that the war, the Civil War, ended in April of 1865. So the Battle of Palmito Ranch in Texas was the last land engagement or battle of the Civil War, and it was fought in far south Texas. Um, it occurred more than one month after the surrender. Now, part of the reason is that communication was really poor back then. Um, being in far south Texas, they were about as far away from where the most of the action was taking place back in the the southeast so it took a long time for communication to get to them uh and also the fact was you know uh the south the confederate army there were kind of a bunch of sore losers and um they even if they did know that the war was over they were probably so angry at the result that it, it kind of encouraged them to to try to fight so looking at this map you can see there were only three major battles uh, in Texas during the Civil War, uh, Sabine Pass, Galveston, and then finally way south Texas, down at kind of the mouth of the Rio Grande at Palmito Ranch. So that brings us to something called the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Emancipation Proclamation was the executive order that was written and signed by Abraham Lincoln to free all the slaves in the South on January 1st, 1863. Now, make note, he signed that on January 1st, 1863, basically two years before the end of the war. Now, even though he signed this order and freed the state, uh, the slaves, the Southern states did not acknowledge this because according to the southern states they no longer belong to the united states they belong to a country called the confederate states of america so um, it was kind of hard for the north to enforce this law that was passed by abraham lincoln in the south uh, because the war was still going on so abraham lincoln freed the slaves in 1863 and it wouldn't be two, until two years later that slaves in the South uh, were able to, uh, to enjoy that freedom that he had granted them. So on June 19th, 1865, um, you know, two, let's see, yeah, two months after the war had ended, a little over two months after the war had ended, the commander of US troops in Texas um, in Galveston read the Emancipation Proclamation and notified everyone, including the slaves who were in, in attendance that day, that they were no longer slaves. They were free. That is why June 19th is now known as Juneteenth. It is a cultural celebration today with barbecues, music, family, and, and community gatherings. Um, every year in Arlington and in Dallas and Fort Worth, there are huge Juneteenth celebrations. And while Juneteenth was originally only a Texas thing, because it's when Texas slaves found out that they were free, even though it was meant as only a Texas celebration, it has grown in significance now to where it has become a nationwide thing. And it is celebrated in all corners of our country. So that's kind of a really neat thing, the fact that, that Juneteenth, whereas it started out as just a Texas thing, has now spread, and it's a celebration of all people 
uh, throughout the entire country. And that brings us to our summary. I knew you couldn't wait to get here, and now we're here. I bet you're excited. So our summary today, few Civil War battles were fought in Texas. Manufacturing increased, but building of railroads declined. Women and children needed to work to replace the men who were fighting in the war. So, hopefully you filled out your notes. Um, now that you're finished with the notes, you will use those to take the Civil War quiz. I um, uh, hope you learned a little bit today, and I um, hope you learned something that you didn't know. And uh, that's about it. Until next time, uh, when we talk about the effects of the war, uh, or the after effects of the war, this is Mr. Hill saying, Talk to you later.